Hello, I'm here with experts from Cluster 7, FSN and Microsoft, Henry Umney, Gary Simon, Kevin Leith and Ian Cleaver to talk about breaking the spreadsheet spiral in financial reporting and in the office of the CFO. And I'm going to kick off by asking Henry Umney, who is CEO at Cluster 7, to start the ball rolling. Over to you, Henry. Thank you, Matthew, and uh, great to be with you uh, today. Um, so I thought I'd start the session today really talking about um, the business landscape uh, as we see it and our observations in the marketplace. Um, and as Matthew said, uh, that swiftly followed uh, by Gary, who will uh, introduce his research. So as we see it today, the business challenges uh, that organizations are facing um, in, in a lot of industries, there's a lot of uh, refinements, cost cutting um, uh, exercises within organizations to try and streamline them. Um, that pressure on costs, um, we certainly see that the Office of the CFO is leading, leading that charge, but also uh, drinking from, from their own um, uh, tap, so to speak, and being able to lead, lead um, the cost cutting and, and, and the forefront of, of that. Added to that, um, businesses are not uh, standing still. Uh, we, we are seeing that businesses are continuing to evolve, whether it's mergers and acquisitions, reacting to new um, opportunities in the marketplace. So there is a need to, to continue to be dynamic. Um, the other, in, in that context also, the enterprise systems that, the, that IT has in place um, do struggle to keep up with that pace. They struggle to, uh, to, to meet those external pressures, whether it is a new merger and acquisition, whether it is an opportunity to look at a new marketplace, a new business line. Um, and and the, the ability for those ent enterprise systems to, to be able to react to the business needs um, is, is, is uh, giving uh, organization um, uh, pressures in being able to, to meet, meet those requirements. And finally, we're also seeing very much an increase in the uh, governance uh, and regulation requirements uh, within organizations. There's an increased scrutiny around the business practices, ensuring that um, the reports that are generated, the data that is being produced, is in line with expectations with, with increased governance requirements, whether locally or, or, or globally. So what we, what we see in our observation in the marketplace is that the bu businesses are increasingly turning to the humble spreadsheet uh, to meet those demands of the business, to be able to alleviate the, the, the constraints the organization has from those enterprise systems, um, and to be able to, as they, to, to run their businesses competitively. But as we said earlier, those challenges are uh, are also tensioned with the fact that the organization is, is, needs to ensure that there are suitable controls, that the business is being run in a, um, in a manner that is uh, meeting whether it's internal or requirements um, or standards, but also increasingly looking at it meeting external requirements, maybe uh, if you're um, a, sorry, a US listed company meeting SOX requirements, for example. So we, we do see this, this contest, competitive tension or business tension between the ability for the organization to be competitive, nimble, but also to be able to demonstrate that, that um, there, are, there is control or transparency around the processes um, that they're running. The result of using spreadsheets um, within the organization is we do see sort of what we call an organizational dysfunction. Um, I guess there's a denial uh, uh, certainly at the C level that, um, that this dysfunction exists. Um, we do see certainly the Office of CFO, um, there are many audit points outstanding around use of spreadsheets or reliance on spreadsheets within the organization. Um, as we said earlier, because the IT, IT uh, systems are, or IT has a challenge to react, um, then we do see IT sidelined. And what effectively what you end up with is very much a siloed um, uh, nature within an organization. Information is siloed within different, um, different parts of that organization, within different finance functions. Um, the second observation uh, is there is a very high manual cost to uh, having spreadsheets with, within uh, those processes. Um, 
a lot of time you you see very uh, talented uh, and and expensive staff. What I would describe as doing an expensive spot the difference and trying to understand how the spreadsheet has evolved uh, through time. Whether when I'm producing, for example, the next finance report, a lot of time is spent ensuring the accuracy and validity of that data. Um, and because in the in the main these manual processes uh, there is no transparency around that. It's very error prone, um, and uh, there are, and because that is recognised within those silos, there's a lot of repetitive uh, checks being made. Beyond that, there is obviously as we described that regulatory exposure. So again, if you are US listed, uh, the ability to be able to demonstrate that there is transparency or four eyes um, uh, reviews of data within the finance function, for example. Can lead to can, can lead to, to to those exposures. Those in financial services, there are additional um, regulatory exposures or, or transparency required around those manual processes. For example, in and around model governance. And the final result of all of that um, is the potential for um, for losses. Uh, so there are financial losses that um, have resulted. Um, but also the operational um, and with any financial loss, uh, the reputational loss associated with that into having to, to, to uh, own up and admit to um, the, the manual processes that, that sit outside of your normal governance uh, structure. So if I go back to the, the denial piece, so in most organizations, there's a denial, certainly in the senior, uh, at, the, at the C level, that, that spreadsheets really pay any, any part um, in, I guess, the information supply chain. Uh, in the main, uh, most organizations believe that, um, uh, that that sort of the business process layer is integrated within uh, the, the central systems that sits on the core uh, infrastructure within the organization. So in an, in, in an ideal world or in the C-level world, data flows, um, flows through the organization with no, no, no interaction, no, there's no transparency around the, the, those manual processes. And in effect, in effect what, we, what we're describing is there is in effect a risk layer that exists within an organization where these spreadsheets are not just simple applications, no, sorry, not just simple desktop tools, they are in effect applications um, where Data is uh, is input where there is functionality that that, that is required that's, that to augment your central systems and there's user interaction to put uh, their expert judgments their um, uh, uh, their well fudge factors in to ensure that uh, the data flows through and the reports uh, that are required are are created within um, those operational and business processes. So the spreadsheets are serving a central, a central need, but as we said earlier, the issue that, that we have is that they are doing this beyond uh, the recognized control framework that exists within, um, uh, within an organization. So in effect, you have your central systems that provide a core base of capability within the organization. Um, and what you have is, the, the business augmenting that with additional manual process, whether it's data capture, whether it's uh, supplementary for calculations, whether it's final mile reporting, the ability for the organization to supplement those, the, the, the core IT enterprise systems to be able to deliver the functionality, the flexibility the business needs, but effectively leading to, as we described earlier, that tension between the business needs and the controls that the organization requires. So the, I guess the challenge organization has is how do you allow an organ, the, the organization to continue to maintain that flexibility, but also to be able to demonstrate transparency and a level of control whilst that functionality sits outside, outside central system. For those organizations that uh, do not address this issue, um, the consequences um, are, are, are well publicized. So uh, earlier, uh, last year in 2016 on a, an, an, an a, uh, analyst call, uh, the CFO of m and had to uh, restate some earnings uh, and later admitted that that was due to a, a spreadsheet error. Um, and a simple Google search will um, identify a number of other organizations that 
had not had the necessarily understanding of the reliance on those spreadsheets and the requisite controls in place to ensure that uh, the data that they rely on from the output um, is of sufficient quality for the organization to rely on it. I'd like to uh, introduce everybody to Gary Simon, uh, the Chief Executive of uh, FSN Network and the leader of the Modern Finance Forum on LinkedIn. Gary's going to take us through a uh, survey that uh, the FSN Network conducted earlier in 2017 on the future of finance reporting. Gary, good to have you with us. Good morning, everybody. Um, this um, session is just briefly going to take you through the highlights of the future of financial reporting research that was done uh, earlier this year. Um, the genesis of this reporting survey was really to explore how to improve uh, the performance of financial uh, reporting, bearing in mind that for many years the uh, reporting supply chain has attracted a lot of funding but hasn't necessarily generated the results that uh, people want. And part of the problem for this of this is that money is being thrown in a fairly piecemeal fashion at the reporting supply chain rather than treating it as a process as a whole. Um, and what this survey does is really takes a holistic approach to reporting and takes perhaps a tradition uh, takes perhaps a different perspective of the reporting than is traditionally uh, the case. One of the uh, problems of uh, financial reporting uh, uh, that everybody is familiar with is the abundance of uh, spreadsheets. And if we turn to the next slide, Henry, we can see something that we have um, labeled the spreadsheet spiral. Everybody knows that there's a proliferation of spreadsheets. Everybody knows that there are problems in using uh, spreadsheets uh, in financial reporting, as well as quite a lot of benefits as well. But of course, spreadsheets were designed initially as a personal productivity tool um, and not as a, uh, or not designed to be uh, an application. Um, but what this research uniquely identified was the root causes uh, for what turns out to be a spreadsheet spiral. In other words, why exactly is spreadsheet growth growing almost uncontrollably? Uh, and what we found was this extraordinary spiral of events, which starts with organizations having a high dependence on spreadsheets. Um, in fact, 71% of organizations depend on spreadsheets for collecting all or a majority of their data across their, their business units. Um, but they are dependent on it for a couple of reasons which this research identifies. First of all, it's about the inability to change the underlying business model, the underlying organizational structure, or perhaps making information changes in the reporting supply chain. Um, and most organizations find it extremely difficult to make changes to their underlying ERP systems, or indeed some of their performance management applications. So they can't really change their reporting very easily. And that's against the backcloth, of course, of very rapid change in the business environment. <coughs> the second thing is that uh, not being able to change things for themselves, they turn to IT uh, uh, as a function and say, well, can you make the changes? And there's a high dependence on the IT department to make the changes, but of course, those things can't happen instantaneously. So what happens is that organizations uh, paper over the cracks with spreadsheets, increasing, ironically, the, the dependence on spreadsheets overall. So you rapidly go around this spreadsheet cycle of not being able to change things, having to turn to IT who can't change things quickly, and then uh, implementing even more spreadsheets to uh, cover the gaps 
in the reporting process. And I think this is really the first time that people have been able to pinpoint exactly the causes of the spreadsheet spiral. It's, it's basically the inability to change underlying systems and uh, the inability of the finance function to be self-sufficient. If we go on to the next slide, Henry, we find that actually life is also a bit more complicated than this. And what we found is a whole raft of difficulties in what we call the reporting ecosystem. A lot of organizations, as we said, uh, struggle with new information requirements. They struggle to take out redundant information uh, that's cluttering up their reporting systems. It's causing delayed decision making. They rely far too much on manual uh, data checking and too much uh, time is spent on manual data collection. But what is interesting is each of these uh, attributes that show that uh, reporting is difficult um, are interlinked, they're, they're related and it's very uh, usual that an organization that has a problem in one of these areas also has a problem in another area. And what came out of this research is that there are certain markers, certain indicators that organizations have a uh, reporting ecosystem that is uh, messy or even in crisis. And what we found was that if an organization is concerned about an unexpected error being discovered in its reporting process, then that organization is most likely to suffer from all these other related uh, system problems. So in a way, uh, it, it's a litmus test for difficulties in the reporting cycle. If you're concerned about an unexpected error being discovered in your spreadsheets, then this is a litmus test for all sorts of other errors in the reporting process. And I suppose what's most worrying about this is almost half, 46% of the many organizations we surveyed here, um, indicated that this is exactly the problem that they have. If we can turn to uh, the next slide, please, uh, Henry. So here we see a very different portrayal of the reporting supply chain. Normally, if I were to draw out what the reporting supply chain looks like, it would be a straight line that runs from data capture in subsidiaries or reporting entities all the way through to consolidation and then on to filing and reporting either publicly or producing the reporting pack in the boardroom. And that's the way that traditionally organizations have tackled the process. So they might have, <coughs> excuse me, they might have tackled the uh, reporting cycle by looking at data capture. They may have looked at the consolidation itself. They may have looked at problems within boardroom, boardroom reporting. But tackling those items individually or in isolation doesn't actually improve the whole process because it's a very linear process and can only move at the speed of the slowest part of the reporting supply chain. And so this portrayal of the uh, reporting process is um, somewhat innovative and a different way of looking at it. And what it's really saying is actually the starting point for repairing and improving the reporting process is tackling the spreadsheet spiral. Is uh, then once you've tackled the uh, spreadsheet spiral, you can move on to repairing the reporting ecosystem because if you've identified and cleared out the spreadsheets that you don't need that uh, are 
uh, confusing and are muddying the waters, then you can start to deal with uh, other spreadsheets that are uh, and problems around redundant information or highly manual processes elsewhere within the in the system. And then finally, when you've tackled the reporting ecosystem in crisis, you can then move on to tackling problems in the boardroom. And it's really quite startling how many boardrooms actually can't get an overall perspective of performance because they are building on shifting sands. They can't depend on their reporting systems to the extent that they would like because they've got problems with the spreadsheet spiral and they've got problems with the reporting ecosystem in crisis as well. So this is really saying that the root cause of all the difficulties in reporting for most organizations is in fact the spreadsheet spiral. And the only way of dealing with that is to uh, get control of the spreadsheets that you're using and also to move to a, an application platform that uh, lends itself to changes directly uh, by the finance function uh, and is capable of being changed quickly without depending on the IT uh, function as well. Great, thanks for that insightful discussion, Gary. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Kevin Leith and I work at Microsoft as a Partner Development Manager and Cluster 7 for one of my clients. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about Cluster 7, their use of the Azure Cloud and their relationship with us as a company. So firstly, as background to working with clients in the financial services sector, uh, we kind of found that two years ago, the type of reaction to public cloud computing was, yeah, I can see that's coming over the horizon, but that's not for me right now. I've got other things on my mind. Uh, and we've seen a shift over the last two years where suddenly the financial services industry uh, is wanting to catch up with other industries as they embrace cloud computing. And so they're now saying, yes, we want to do this. And the two words we hear most frequently are safe, and compliant. So financial services is well on its way <clears throat> with the digital transformation and trying to solve some of those problems that Gary was mentioning. Um, it's involved a subtly different approach to other industries in that because it's such a heavily regulated industry, because there is such a uh, focus on compliance, uh, we Microsoft have had to engage with 45 different regulators in various countries around the globe over the last two years, just to ensure that our cloud services are fit for purpose uh, and can be used as part of a uh, innovative solution. But I'd like to pause a bit and just think a little around, you know, why uh, cloud computing and cloud projects are catching on in financial services. Um, the fact is that most solutions in the past would have been installed on infrastructure managed by an internal IT team or possibly hosted with some form of uh, service provider or data center. Um, <clears throat> the first reason for moving to the cloud is pretty much always around cost savings because a load of, of uh, infrastructure at massive scale across the planet it will, will end up cheaper than servers in a server room for a particular company. And, and that's really what's got cloud projects onto the boardroom table and happening. But as a byproduct of those projects, we found that the companies who do move to cloud become more agile. You know, they can scale their IT both up and down uh, at a whim, which they couldn't do before. And they can be responsive to the challenges that they see in the market. So these are the new reasons why people are starting to embrace cloud uh, on top of the cost savings that one receives. Now this is a slide <clears throat> that talks around um, compliance, you know, audits, certifications. Uh, we've had a new managing director here at Microsoft UK for just over a year now, and she's constantly reminding us that you know, Microsoft runs on trust, Azure runs on trust. If your customers can't trust the system, they're not going to use it. So at the bottom of this slide is a link to the so-called Azure Trust Center, which you can find just by putting into any search engine. 
and there it will give you detail around you know what we've done to comply with the various standards in various countries to make sure that this is an always-on platform um, and, and fit for purpose. But I think it's worth making a couple of notes just about the United Kingdom um, since you know, we have some political change that's going on at the moment, have some uncertainty about what things are going to look like over the next couple of years. And unsurprisingly, about uh, a year ago or more now, um, we set up and uh, announced some UK-based data centers uh, in order to service UK demand. Um, they're at a slight premium, 10-15% kind of more of data centers across Europe, but for folks who absolutely need to have their data in the UK you know, all the time, here's a solution for that. Uh, many, many people are still uh, sharing their data across EU countries, and there's obviously a whole of legislation that revolves around that, making sure that that is, uh, again, kind of fit for purpose. So all of this kind of bedrock in terms of cloud platform is what's made it possible for us to work with Cluster 7 to create a version of their software, which is now cloud-based, which is scalable. And what the impact is, is that you know, they're able to deliver that software to end users with little or no installation costs, um, particularly compared to the way in which it was delivered previously you know, on on-premise hardware. And that's made them you know, very agile compared to other software developers. Um, they can offer small trial versions as they do, uh, and can then scale those versions as much as you want. Um, and so that's helping them uh, really convert the financial services market to their particular solution. So I'm happy to have been working with Cluster 7 for over a year now, and the bulk of that work was around re-architecting their solution from an on-prem type environment for a cloud uh, architecture, and ensure that that was, in fact, you know, also fit for purpose on top of our uh, particular platform. And so I'm confident that this is a solution that you know, people can trust, given the combination of the work that's been done by Cluster 7 and all the work we've put in to our cloud platform uh, underneath that. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so I guess what I'd like to t talk to you about now is um, how technology can help organizations uh, meet the challenge of the spreadsheet spiral within their organization. Um, as we heard earlier, there is a prevalence of spreadsheets within the Office of CFO um, in Orion Finance reporting um, uh, from Gary. Um, but, but also in our uh, years of, doing, of uh, observing the marketplace, um, we've seen that spreadsheets are used to solve uh, many, many problems. And in fact, there are quite literally, seems to be any problem that, uh, that is, there's no problem that's uh, too, too big that, that people won't uh, use the humble spreadsheet to try and solve, whether that's um, within the Office of CFO or wider. Um, we've seen spreadsheets that have over a thousand worksheets uh, that are over uh, or several hundred megabytes in size. Um, in all walks of life, as I say, whether in the office of CFO, whether you're selling uh, credit derivatives or widgets, it seems that the spreadsheet is being used to augment um, those IT, IT solutions. So here at Cluster 7, we provide a technology solution to allow um, organizations to, to tackle that issue. Um, so in terms of what we, we provide the marketplace, I guess there are sort of three key elements to what uh, technology can do to, to enable um, organizations to tackle that, that spreadsheet spiral. The first is, is really a discovery phase, to, to really to understand what's out there. Um, and that comes in a multitude of, of flavors, um, from being able to, to understand the files that have been used within the organization themselves. So, so you know, at a month's end, uh, what are the spreadsheets that, that are being used um, to, 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 to run that, that, that month or quarter end process? Um, to be able to understand the lineage. A lot of spreadsheets um, uh, don't live in isolation. They're taking data from one or multiple sources. Uh, you may be consolidating a region, and there are several countries in that region, for example. Um, but then in a more... Uh, uh, detail and is actually understanding the logic uh, and, and the, the function and how that spreadsheet works. And, and we'll see from Ian later um, how the technology can expose a, a, a lot of that. From that discovery phase, really what an organization needs to do is to understand, you know, what are, what are those 
uh, those, those core spreadsheets that, that sit outside, um, or sorry, that are aug augmenting those core IT systems that sit outside of uh, IT's control. So really it is from that discovery phrase, from talking to the business, it's really to ensure the organization does understand, because um, most, under, most organizations will have a, a register, an I, a register of their IT assets. Um, what they struggle to, to do from an enterprise perspective is to understand what are those key spreadsheets that are augmenting those um, enterprise systems that we rely on, that you know, if we don't have enough transparency around their use and uh, an understanding of their use, could end up with us making a mistake um, and you know, that getting into the public domain. And once we have an inventory of those, those spreadsheets, is to really to understand um, and ensure the integrity of those applications and the spread, uh, uh, within, within the organization. And that, that also comes into three, three key sections. The first being to understand um, you know, or ensure you have a version history of each of those files, ensure you know who has access to each of those files, and any protection you have around that file to ensure that we understand that protection, um, how passwords are changing and how any protection is, is changing within that file. The second stage is, once we've, we've got those, that version history locked down, is to understand from a business as usual perspective how that, that functionality is changing. Are we, are we fundamentally rewriting that spreadsheet? Are we changing the core assumptions? Are we changing the macro code? Are we changing the links, the, the structure of that workbook? And then finally, to understand from a data perspective, what, how, how data is flowing through that spreadsheet. Is it, is it uh, being updated within, within agreed bounds? Are the calculations uh, coming out within agreed, within agreed, agreed um, uh, bounds of a normal activity? And across that, we also therefore are able to, or the technology is able to alert people uh, to any anomalous activity, but also to be able to enact a review and approval process where required. So again, for example, using Sarbanes-Oxley as an example, which requires a four-eyes review of any finance uh, uh, spreadsheet. Within, within the pervasive of, of cluster seven, you're able, you're able to, um, uh, to demonstrate um, through a sign-off process that, that segregation of duties, that review um, that is required when your auditors come round. With well, all of this in place, you know, how does that, how, how can that manifest itself within uh, an organization? Um, what we at Cluster 7 uh, are doing is looking at collecting that information around uh, those core, uh, that's core spreadsheet activity to be able to collate, collate that activity and that understanding, ensuring that uh, the controls that are defined um, are within, within their agreed SLAs and being able to surface that information into a wider um, GRC platform. So this is an example of a mock-up that we've done with a um, uh, GRC provider, um, IBM Open Pages, where we are surfacing information from the Cluster 7 application into a wider CFO dashboard to ensure there is visibility around that spreadsheet um, activity within the organization. We talked earlier about um, the Office of the CFO uh, in terms of Gary's research. We see many use cases for, uh, for our technology. There are regulatory drivers, I would say finance drivers, certainly audit, um, and from IT, but also from the business. And we do see that spreadsheets uh, manifest themselves in a wide range of, of uh, supporting a wide range of functions and, um, uh, and business um, requirements of an organization. And Cluster 7's technology has been used to ensure or um, uh, there is compliance with any of those regulatory requirements or being able to, to, to bring peace of mind or that, an, enable remediation, for example, of any spreadsheets within, within those, that organization. So what we're going to move on to now uh, is the latest um, uh, member of the Cluster 7 family is the Cluster 7 um, uh, Cloud Spreadsheet Manager. CSM, um, which is effectively allowing an organization to uh, access the capabilities of uh, Cluster 7 via the Azure platform, which uh, Kevin described early, earlier. So what Cluster 7 has done is taken a very mature product 
um, and re rewritten the product to, to work within uh, the Azure platform um, to, to allow organizations very quickly to get access to the capabilities of the Cluster 7 um, uh, uh. Um, so what does what does CSM do? And, and Ian will set will uh, uh, give you a, a demonstration of the t the capabilities um, shortly. But in, in effect, there are um, three key capabilities of the the technology: the ability to assess and classify the risk of a spreadsheet, so that understanding the complexity, knowing knowing more about the technology, um, the ability to uh, compare versions, so uh, a spreadsheet um, will be updating. Um, so the ability for uh, an organization to take, say, for example, take uh, uh, February's month end and understand exactly how it updated from January month end. So you can ensure that uh, before, before releasing that report, whether it's internally or externally, we have transparency around how that has been updated. And we're required also to, for people to uh, to sign off and agree that they have completed that review and approval. Within the cloud, because people are, are, are able to, to submit these uh, up onto the Azure platform, what you're doing is allowing the organization to cre create and, and maintain that inventory of those spreadsheets uh, within that cloud. So people have a, a secure location to be able to, to, to review, uh, um, certainly if you're an audit, for example, to be able to go and review you know how the September month then was uh, produced. Who, uh, if, if there were changes, who who uh, signed off and agreed that those changes were correct, and 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 able to see those results in a secure location. And why use uh, our our CSM, our Cloud Spreadsheet Manager? In effect, in effect, you're getting uh, access to an incredibly powerful piece of technology. Uh, there's a very low, low cost of ownership. There's a very fast. Um, I've given it to service, you can sign up very quickly. It doesn't enable, and as Ian will show you later, you know, to be able to answer some of the questions, um, some questions around, you know, how, you know, we know that Ian updated my spreadsheet, what does he do? The productivity gains in terms of being able to actually understand, to, to remove, remove of us, as I said earlier, that expensive, um, uh, expensive spot the difference, um, but also to be able to reduce the risk and, and and I guess to, to start to remove that tension that exists between the need uh, for organization to, to, to be dynamic, but also to be able to demonstrate that there, are, there is transparency around those processes. So hopefully once Ian has, uh, has finished his demo, you will, you will um, be able to understand the sort of productivity gains um, that you will, you will gain, uh, the, the control, uh, that you will be able to demonstrate both yourselves and to, to external parties that you have over those processes, um, which will go a long way to you know, um, actually meeting a number of those regulatory um, uh, requirements that you may have or, certain, or internal governance requirements you may have. But also it should lead to increased accuracy um, and certain quality of the, the, the data that flows through those spreadsheets um, within the organization. And finally, I guess it, it does give people a peace of mind that a, 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 a risk that is becoming increasingly, uh, or organizations becoming increasingly aware of, there is actually a way of solving that. There is a way of re removing some of those audit points that you have around the organization, but not just to get rid of those audit points, but actually to give you, um, as I say, more transparency and control around, uh, around those spreadsheet processes until such time as they can be replaced by IT applications. 